if I may just kind of piggyback on the last two or three uh, questioners. Um, without uh, relying on, and I like the differentiation that one of them made between religion and God, um, without reliance on, on the concept of, of a supreme being, of God, um, on what do you base, uh, you had mentioned the concept of right and wrong and good and bad. Now what becomes the standard by which you evaluate those concepts? You want to go for it? I mean, the standard becomes your life and its requirements, <clears throat> or put more abstract, abstractly, man's life. <clears throat> so let's step back. Why does one need a morality? That is the question that Ayn Rand begins with in her investigations into the field of ethics and developing her theories. It's not, well, what moral code should I adapt, adopt, but why do I need one in the first place? And the reason you need one is that you're a living being <clears throat> who has to survive. But unlike other animals, that does not come inbuilt in you. You don't know what values to pursue or how to pursue them. You don't know how, I mean, just take simple things like food, clothing, shelter. You don't, you know, when you're born, you don't know that you need these things or how to achieve them. And I mean, there's many more values of that from an advanced industrial civilization to the need of friendship, to the need of love. All these things are, are needs of a living organism, of a, of a man, of a human being. <clears throat> Yet you don't know how to achieve them, and you don't even know that they're values in the first place. And that are the, those are the types of things that the science of ethics teaches you. They teach you what are the requirements to live and prosper and to achieve happiness. So what are they, and then how do I achieve them? By what principles do I have to act and live by in order to achieve my life and my happiness? And that, in essence, is what morality as a field, as a scientific field, is devoted towards. And so the standard becomes the requirements of human life. That which furthers life, human life, is good. That which threatens and destroys it is evil. So, I mean, I mean, there's much more to say, but that gives you a, at least a headway into Ayn Rand's approach to ethics. And now, just as an aside, to think that religion can give you an answer to right and wrong. So it's uphold as well. The only way to have absolutes in morality is through religion. That, I mean, is a bizarre notion. And it go back to the story of Isaac and Abraham. The whole point of the story, and, and religious figures take this as revealing the essence of morality, is that it's whatever God says it is. If he tells you to kill your son, that's good. If he tells you later, oh, I was just kidding, then now it would be bad to kill your son. <laughs> there is no absolute here. It's you're dependent on God's will. It's supernatural subjectivism. There's no difference between that and a kind of personal subjective of an Al Capone coming along and saying, what's right? It's what I say. It's what I say goes. And you just have a, a, a supernatural version of that same mentality. And to view that as giving you absolutes in ethics is, I mean, it's a complete reverse of the truth. The only way you can have absolutes in ethics if it's based on reality which is an absolute, the requirements of staying in reality, of living and achieving happiness. And that is what a scientific approach to ethics, that's where it begins. <clears throat> I, just, to, just to add to that, uh, I recommend if you're interested in the virtue of selfishness, read the virtue of selfishness written by Ayn Rand, um, where she goes into a lot more detail about you know, a rational approach to morality. 